All right, well, welcome to the Richard Lewis Show, except, Sam, you're mentally ill, mate, because it's not a Richard Lewis Show, is it? Yeah. No. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? You told me. The, check, check Skype. Check the doc that you were sent. <laughs> I haven't got the doc. You said, right, hang on, you looked at the Twitch stream and saw the Richard Lewis yeah. Show 56. Yeah, look, and look what I tweeted as well. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how <laughs> fucked up you can possibly be at this. Mate, like, it's it's six p.m. where I you are. Mate, I just right, wasn't so let told. me let, let me just go over. Let me just, just sorry. Let me just go over. So I, I tweeted that the show is going to start with yeah, uh, some I. Tweet. So I, I so I so I tweeted that. Yeah, I love okay. checking tweets. I got a job to do, but I got buttons press. On the conversation, we had a conversation. And I said, let's do an episode of I Hate It Here and started doing links to I Hate It. I did No, you said a show. You said, let's do a show. Then on Skype, I've even typed I Hate It Here first, episode 13. You said that as I was playing the song. I'm pressing buttons. So. This is your fuck up, mate, once again. uh, No way. You just don't fucking pick it. You just don't say the right (laughs) words. If you say the word show, I attribute it to show. Uh, Well. This is, do you know what I mean? Uh, like, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to start again. Yeah, that's all right. I'm lucky. Next time, you know, tell me the name and I'll do it. Yeah, ne- next time across three different mediums, including yeah, tell it to my ears. To you. Tell it to my ears. Including talking to you, so technically four ears. different ways. But everyone knows how much of a fucking drugged out fucking degenerate Mate. you are, like. I can prove it. It's even in the chat. Literally, the only time you said I hear you here is then, three minutes ago. Yeah. That's yeah, what I t- well, I was already doing it. Hang on a minute. He, he can't possibly have missed the other three fucking ways I told him we were going to do I hear you here. I was like, there's no way. There's no Me way. Used the word show. That, Look at him. So, yeah, obviously. What, what? How would you describe I hear you here? Is it I not a show? I hear the same way we always do. Not Every not time you say, let's do it's, I hear you here, you don't say, let's yeah, do a show. A- no. Is it a sh- is it a show that we no. do? No. We not do a one show. show. We have one show. So what would what would you call it? A series. So it's a show. A series no, is not a- the same thing. It is the same thing. It's not. A series is a group of shows. In isolation, a show belongs to a series, right? Yeah, unless you got something called the Richard Lewis Show, then that gets called the show. Yeah, the show. Yeah, let's do a show. Exactly, a show. Yeah, it goes in the group of shows. Yeah, you, you're the reaching. shows. You're reaching. Well, look, tell you what, right? Let's d- sit down, be humble, just run the I hate it here. Yo, man, yeah. Stuff. You can leave this in. I don't give a fuck. All right. All right. Well, hang on. I'm gonna have to change X split fucking thing, no, night. So I'm gonna have to whip it round. So give me like 15 seconds. What does that mean? What do I do for 15 no, seconds? You just sit there and do nothing. All right. right. Bye right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome. <laughs> Have you fucked it up? <laughs> I, 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 why, why, why you zoomed in on me, man? Yeah, look, what's that then? What have you done? <laughs> you fucking serious, man. What, what? All right, well, is that, is, that how, is that how long you need? Do you need me to buy 10 seconds for you? Right, great, great job, mate. Do the intro again, or? <laughs> no, 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 this isn't a shambles. You are a fucking shambles, mate. I do you understand? Like... Like, should I actually be upset every time I start hearing bong noises on the fucking Discord? <laughs> but you always tell me you can keep it together. Like, oh, don't worry about me, but <laughs> It'll be all right. 
it's not all right, is yeah, it? Like, it's, it's far from. This is your it's bad fucking. Anymore. And now, and now you're muted, mate. No, I'm not anymore. I yeah, muted at the okay. start because I, I thought we were just going to redo it again. So that was just me and you. Right, what people are saying now, there you go. Now, now you're in it. Yeah. Fucking, this is unreal. This... Right. Can you can you keep it again for just an hour? Nick, you rushed me into it. It was still set up for when I was in your house. It's your bad. I usually I situate myself, but you know what I mean? You chipped me out and you rushed me. I rushed you into it. Mate, we sat down for an hour. <laughs> Yeah, we sat down I, I was prepared for the other show I thought we were doing. Mate, it's all the same shit. I mean, I don't want people nah, to find out. But listen, I don't want people to find out that it's basically us just talking about yeah, things. Know, it's about different X files, mate. This there he come. <laughs> Look at it, right? Look at it about this shit. There's green screens and everything. There isn't, or is there? There is, I got green screens and everything. No, wait, no, shit. no you know my Twitch. green screens, because remember when you tried to edit the intro in, and there was just a massive long green screen there, and it was like, where the fuck's it just a green screen for 20 seconds? Yeah, I, I, I fucked that up. Yeah, that was movie my Movie magic, I see, man. Movie magic, yeah. All right, then. So, uh, shall we, should we do I Hate It here, then? <laughs> yeah. Want to do a show? Like, Am I just not going to edit this entire vod? No, oh, fuck it, just leave. I mean, what, what I was thinking, we could probably clip that entire part of 56 and just put it out, just milk that YouTube money, I guess. <laughs> and the next show can just be 57, like, there we go. episode 56. Yeah, the shit one. And then we just move on and forget about it. Anyway, look, let's start with something. We're all laughing now, right? And it's I hate here, so you know it's going to kill the fucking mood as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's mean? all the fun out of the way. Like a sudden attack of diarrhea in a fucking hot tub. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is this is how it's going down. Um, so let's start, right? We've got a pretty um, vacuous and self-absorbed narcissistic society, right? I mean, that's what we fucking talk about a lot. You know, people need to just always be focusing on themselves. You know, you see it, right? Like people fucking doing selfies all the fucking time. Yeah, I saw that terrorist uh, uh, attack at Westminster in London. There was a cunt with a selfie stick, like, taking a photo of himself with the disaster in the background. Can, can you even imagine that? Like, yeah, just, just had a terrorist atrocity. You know. So this is the new story here. Let's see if you can bring up the first link without a disaster. Right, uh, uh, you know, again, I'm, we're, we're all laughing, but nothing funny about this. Uh, this was an attempted murder uh, in Utah. Uh, a girl was shot in the head and left for dead by two boys in her school because she was messaging them too much on Snapchat. Yeah, kind of a kind of an overreaction, I think. A little bit unreasonable. Say. Yeah, a, little, a little bit unreasonable. Uh, but yeah, this is the story of Desiree Turner, who, you know, she'd been fucking, you know, messaging these guys on Snapchat, right? And these two guys had had enough of it for whatever reason. I don't know why you just don't hit the block button or, or, or whatever. Uh, so they originally planned uh, to kill her once. The original plan was to cut her throat and they lured her to a canal and then they, they couldn't do it. They couldn't go through with it. So a couple of days later, they said, oh, come meet us at the canal again. You know that weird, strange time at the canal that we had? Do you want to do, do that again? And then this time, one of the boys had brought a gun and they just shot her in the head. Who are these people? I know. Like, what, what, is, what is wrong? Yeah, I don't want to say... Um, I don't, I don't want to say the state of youth today, right? But I mean, fucking get a fucking grip, you know what I mean? Um, so the thing is, she lived. Uh, they, She was just shot in the head and, and left for dead. And, uh, you know, she survived and got to the hospital and, and stuff. Uh, they're pushing for the death penalty, obviously, <laughs> as you might. Um, but yeah, so this was the this was the story. Uh, Sheriff Deputy Brian Groves handling that investigation. At what point? Uh, mate, this has been a debate that I've had internally for ages. At what point do you just say this person is just beyond repair? I go, if you're at the point where you just think shooting people in the head for n n next to nothing is reasonable. 
you know, look, I, I, I don't know, because, you know, I'm not necessarily pro-death penalty, like, but I exist in that weird sort of twilight zone that I think we all exist in, right? Which is, you know, if it was our relatives, yeah, we'd happily, like, kill the, the individual yeah. that did, right? You know? And I understand that, but the whole point of the justice system is you're meant to be above that kind of, like, petty, eye-for-an-eye vengeance philosophy. So I don't know, you know? I mean, I, I, I guess that the the argument is, you know, they're ne- you're never beyond repair, right? You? You're never beyond redemption. But even as I say that, I'm not sure I entirely yeah, believe that's what it. I mean. I don't think I believe that either. So, uh, but yeah, so, you know, uh, I guess don't send too many fucking Snapchats because uh, people might be plotting to silence you. Uh, <laughs> then you've got this guy, other end of the spectrum, uh and again you know i don't like to laugh when people die obviously it's not it's not funny but this is a guy who uh was in the bath uh 32 year old from uh, ealing west london and he wanted to be on his phone in the bath and it was running out of battery so he plugged it in to try and charge it and it fell in the bath and it it killed him. BG. BG. Now, you know, I don't know about you. I always got told, I, you know, it was a very early age. Don't um. Don't fucking put anything electric in the bath with you. Yeah, like whenever I take my phone and like I usually have a power bank charger. I'm like super careful. Like whenever I plug it in, it's outside of the bath. It never actually comes near the bath. I'm always on edge. I guess this guy just forgot. Yeah, I mean, you know, and obviously people are not, you know, the safety campaigners are out, right? You got to, I I love these guys, the safety campaigners. You know, electricity and water, you know, that thing that's never mixed since we discovered it. Just a reminder, like, what, can you not do something a bit more productive with your life? Like, I'm pretty sure, you know, the vast majority of us, are going to have a good enough handle on this. You know, there's probably some safety campaigners out there. Fat fire will burn you. Yeah. We, we know we're all right with it. Okay. We've moved, we've moved past it, but D- did you read what he actually did for me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His head's gone, me. Yeah. I know. Fuck yeah. Off, as if he didn't know. Yeah. That must've been a suicide or something, but there's no way that was an accident. Like, no, I, I don't think it's a fucking... I think he's just an idiot. You put an extension cord on your chest yeah. in the bath. Yeah. What the fuck's wrong with him? Like, so, yeah, he's... Dead, he, no, he, like, that's what's wrong with him now, but fucking... Like, yeah, I mean, wrong with him before as well. But, yeah, he actually used a full-blown extension cord from the hallway because he just couldn't unhook himself from the fucking Matrix... You know, like, just for five minutes, like, just have a bath, like, just sit there, wash your balls, you know, just enjoy it, just have a soak, and get out and go about your day, but he couldn't, so yeah, he had a huge fucking extension lead that come around the corner, he's put, he's balanced the extension lead precariously, and he's just there, like, yeah, <laughs> Snapchatting, having a bath, like, and then just fucking... He's just killed himself, Annie. But it's what I mean. Like you know, the, 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 people are going. Just a reminder that uh, you know, be careful when charging. Oh, dudes, like this guy's just fucked in the feet. Just feed. a reminder. Make sure your box hasn't gone if you're going to have a bath. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean. Like, don't just throw an electrical object in the bath with you. Like, just a reminder. Get carers if you need one. And you know, look, uh, there's this as well uh you know just people are just fucking i don't know what to say it's like some people don't want to live you know like uh, they've got no sort of understanding about self-preservation this is the story about a guy who went to uh do an eating challenge at voodoo donuts great donuts by all accounts by the way and he went to a denver donut shop and he did an eating challenge now the eating challenge is there's a fucking half pound donut and you have to eat it in eight seconds, right? So the guy decided, 
Oh god. Um, this is the guy. Cool, but... I know this is this has got your name written all over on it. Like, let's, <laughs> be fair. Like, let's be fair. Some people, some people just have no luck, and then some people just deserve. Man what dies they get. eating literal bucket full of buttermilk chicken. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be it, right? But basically what happened was he said, I'll I'll have a bash at that eating challenge. So the employee, like everyone give him a round of applause. He tried he's tried to he hasn't just took his time. Like, you know, I've got eighty seconds to play with. He's just wedged a half pound donut into his esophagus. <laughs> like I, I, I just, choked to death. No, he actually yeah. did. I thought he just had a full palps, but like the sugar no. just pushed him over the edge. No, he, he admit he just wedged it into his what fucking air hole. He just wedged it into his air hole. He had one <laughs> sip of water and then just fucking hunched over and started. Like, <laughs> right? Straight side burg, it. And look at this though. Listen to this. An eyewitness watching somebody participate in an eating contest it looks like they're distressed anyway the whole thing looks like a sign of distress so nobody realized what was happening so he's just going like this banging and people think fucking hell he's struggling with that <laughs> he's struggling to breathe you fucking morons he's struggling to live everyone just watched him die <laughs> yeah they just watched him die they just watched him die saying <sighs> You know, oh well, well, that, that that fucking donuts, fucking bit. I'm not having one of them. Oh wait, he's dead. Yeah, okay, cool. So, you know, and then look at this, right? Look, uh, one one of the um, again, one of the people who was there said we weren't running in front of cars, we weren't playing with guns or anything that causes death. We were just out having fun. You know, speaking of her shock that an eating contest could turn deadly so fast. Guys, like, <laughs> you're pushing objects into this precious pipeline. You know, you, you got to be fucking careful here. I mean, forget the fact that, like, this is just a disgusting headline on, like, fucking multiple levels. Because, obviously, how would I explain this to someone, I don't know, that, like, in the third world? Like, how, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, this how 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 did that guy die? Oh well, uh, he. We do these things called eating competitions. You'll never get to do them because you know, you 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 you're lucky if you just get to eat at all, right? But but what we do is we have so much that we have contests to see who can eat the most. It's just fucking gross, isn't it? And then like yeah, and it's dead sad because he decided to eat. A half pound donut, which is in itself a symbol of everything that's grotesque uh, about you know modern society, and uh, he choked on it. Anyway, here's a bag of flour. <laughs> you know, say so, yeah, a man. He's like the fucking Darwin Awards, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking unreal. Uh, so what else we got here? Told you some people be on repair, mate. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Um. Oh, uh, uh, have you uh, have you checked on your mum lately, by the way? Why? Because this headline. After the start to the show, I, I feel reasonable in asking if it runs in the family. This was the headline that uh, the police woman over a uh, police uh, in California need help identifying a woman they found who was walking around wet and naked, claiming to be a mermaid. So picture of her as well. You can see the men in her eyes. But... Yeah, you can. You can actually. Yeah, you can have a good old stare, can't you? Just yeah, like I used to look for a thousand miles. She's seen too much. The, the woman who <laughs> has two webs <laughs> on both feet told officers that she had been in the water, but replied, "I don't know." To most questions, the police asked her. So, if you can help identify in this know. mermaid, look. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a random Travi Gaff a bit. I know, as soon as I zoomed in, it's just his face. These nuts. <laughs> Sorry, I'm buckled. Ah, <laughs> oh, classic banter. Mm. But yeah, so th there you go. That's the face. Has she got a tash going on? Uh, or is that just the shadow? Yeah, she has like. Bit of a tash. She has like. You know, get get the epilator out. That's all I'm gonna say. Take uh, take care of that shit. 
Right, okay. While we're just dealing with lunatics as well, let's get this one out of the way. And then we'll move into some more horrific stories, shall we? I think we're there. I think we're there. Uh, so this one, I mean, the headline alone is just fucking ridiculous. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm about to tap out. I'm about to tap out, mate. I'm about to tap out. So this is the headline in the Toronto Sun. Man spends $50,000 on plastic surgery on his way to becoming a sexless alien. It's Vinio's... <laughs> it's Vinio's out-of-this-world dream to look like a sexless alien. And to achieve it, the makeup artist is ready to splurge $150,000 to remove his genitals nipples and belly button on top of the fifty thousand dollars he has already forked over on more than a hundred skin and facial procedures the 22 year old from los angeles of course says he's already had multiple rhinoplasties and fillers for his lips cheeks and brow bone to give him an extraterrestrial look while also wearing large black contact lenses I want to be a sexless alien being. I want my outside to reflect how I feel on the inside. So I want to be a the most alien thing like him is his forehead, and he was just born with that. But didn't even pay for that because it seems you're fifty grand. Let's get the contact lenses, but rock our forehead. So uh, I'll read you some of these other quotes as well because they're, they're gold. Uh, I could live without sexual organs, so why should I have a penis or a vagina? I don't see why I shouldn't have my genitals completely removed and have nothing down there. I actually support that. I support your right to remove your genitals. You know, let's let's nip this sickness in the bud. Thank you very much. This video's mentally ill as well. Man. Nah, you playing the bit? Yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> Just being the alien. I mean, you know, look, it's like I've said, I respect everyone's fucking right to, you know, be the way they want to be, right? But you can't tell me he's not got a problem. Oh, he's mad <laughs> mentally ill, he's fucking fierce, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, just saying, as long as we all agree. As long as we all agree on that, I, you know, I can sleep well tonight, you know? What's that cunt doing with his life as well, but that he's got 150 grand to drop on being an alien? Ah, yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Do you think his parents kind yeah, of supplement him? I don't think he's one paying that, like. So, but yeah, a bit, bit much, isn't it? Um, right, so we'll get rid of that. And now now we're getting into the, the thick end of the wedge. Oh, where are we going to go? What horrible story are we going to bring up now? Well, there you go. Let, let's let's just get this one out of the way. Uh, this is a story like it just blows my mind. Like again, just constant proof of uh, religion. You know, just fucking being an absolute uh, you know scourge across the board. This is the story that a, a woman from um, Nicar well, a Nicaraguan woman was exorcised, right? Because she had a demon, and yeah, that the exorcism meant she had to be thrown into a fire. Because yeah. that's how you get demons out of you, you know. Which is news to me, by the way. Uh, I always thought, you know, splash of holy water, bit of a cross and that. But basically what happened was uh, she was stripped naked and then thrown into a fire by a group of people um, to, uh, to basically purge her of the demons. The procedure was overseen by an evangelical pastor, Juan Gregorio Rocha Romero. And Rocha Romero said when questioned uh, by the press and the police that he'd done nothing wrong. Uh, the woman had simply fallen into the fire. And coincidentally, at that moment that she fell into the fire, a demon exited her body. It's just all one big coincidence. 
So, and this is the type of shit that goes on in these sort of small corners of fucking planet Earth, you know? Like, this this is why when people are like, oh, you know, Christianity is kind of benign. Nah, nah, it's still, it can still be fucked up. This This idea of, like, demonic fucking possession and, you know, getting it out of you and, and, and sin. It can be, it can be pretty fucking hairy if people are left to do it unchecked. And, you know, we all know historically that they have, uh, they have a particular predilection for just burning women alive. I mean, that's like ingrained in the history of it all. If anybody uh, has read up on, you know, the Salem witch trials and that sort of thing, they do, they do like a good burn of a woman. Why not? Why not? It's all fine. Uh, <laughs> there's this. We've seen this before. This was similar to a story that happened in the U.S. Uh, Sam, you ever you ever felt suicidal, mate? Uh, no, not completely. I don't think. All right. Not anywhere close to where it was going to be a problem. I don't think. Well, a lot of people do, right? And so. In the UK, the NHS, they created something called the 111 helpline. So it's it's a, basically an emergency hotline for anyone with suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideations. It's like one up from the Samaritans. Uh, it, it's, it's NHS sanctioned. It's NHS approved. Uh, it's 24 hour around the clock from all the people uh, in uh, basically London, you know, around London and the boroughs around London. Because obviously everyone else can fuck off. I mean, that's pretty much how Britain operates, right? If you live outside of London, go fuck yourself. Uh, but the problem is uh, an undercover journalist wanted to test out just how effective it was and called the 111 hotline. And uh, call handlers would be asleep at their desks while answering the calls so they wouldn't get picked up or they'd, they'd press the button and then go back to sleep and just leave people hanging. They'd say to the person on the call that they were busy, too busy to, to listen. And uh, there was one handler that hung up on at least three patients, including one who was just having heart palpitations was in that much of an emotional state, right? The newspaper reported an alleged conversation with one of the handlers about how she dealt with the suicidal patient. It said the handler told the undercover reporter, she was crying and I was asking her stuff like, do you not really want to talk? And she was like, no. So I put her on mute. Right. <laughs> Just going to ring up. This is it. Last dance saloon, right? So they're now doing an investigation. I still don't think it's going to top the one in America. Uh, where, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. That was a good one. But this is, uh, you know, this is, again, I, you know, I don't understand. Like, wh why just don't do the job? Like, just don't do it. You know, if you don't want to fucking do it, like, no one's got a gun to your head, you know? Don't fucking just don't do the job. If you can't do the job, because it's a pretty important job. You're going to have to sit there and actually, you know, talk to people. And they might not be rational. That's the whole point. That's why they're calling. If you haven't got that level of patience, uh, it's probably not the job for you. You know? You can't just treat it like it's a fucking call center job. Yeah, I'm going to reroute that. <laughs> Fuck that. Back, back, back in the queue for you, mate. All right. I can. Another, there's another story here that uh, I can imagine. Uh, that I can imagine you. This would apply to you, especially after today. So this is the story. I, I mean, again, just a, a mad headline. So this is on CTV News in Canada. It's in Ontario. Uh, a 20-year-old man has a court date next month after a bad first day on the job. Possibly an understatement. The headline, man allegedly punches manager in face during first day on the job. So this guy had gone through, he was working in a fast food restaurant, 
right? And he was just in his training. It was literally day one. And then the guy just fucking lost his mind and punched his manager in the face, which I imagine is probably grounds for dismissal. I don't know. What do you think? As he works in a gym, man. Why would why would like working a boxing in a gym? Well, I, I still think that'd be wrong. Huh? Like, it's like if you went up and hit an MMA fighter and went, well, yeah, but you do it for a living. Oh, though, but I mean mid spa, not just digs out of nowhere, like. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, well, that's a very specific. Yeah, digs out of nowhere would be unreasonable, yeah, no matter who it is. But even Nazis. <laughs> but you know, I, I like. We've all been there, I guess. I mean, we've all thought about it. He's just... You're doing it a bit early. Like, if you are going to attack your manager, which I don't endorse or support, but if you are going to do it, like, save it to the end. Because every job has, like, a natural cycle, right? Like, uh, you can do any shit for six months. And, like, for the first three months, it'll seem, like, super interesting. And there's still stuff to learn. And your systems. And, ooh. And, you know, and you're doing all of this stuff. And that's your sort of attention curve, right? You're still on the upward slope. Like, oh, now I can fix this problem and that problem. And then you kind of plateau out a little bit. And then by the end of six months, you're just fucking bored. You hate your job and you want to do something else, something else entirely. Wait until you get to that stage before you start throwing sucker punches. Not day one during the training phase where you're supposed to find like, you know, it's an ice cream machine. This is how the ice cream machine works. Like, are you fucking, I can't take it. Massive digs to the chops, like so. Yeah, just uh, you know, you ever had a job where you wanted to hit someone, Sam? Um, no. To be honest, everyone I've ever worked for has been nice. Never really been trained. Really? Yeah. You've never had a shit job. I've had a shit job, but not with like shit people. Like I was a labourer, but that was, it was shit because it was hard work. It wasn't shit because the people. Mm. But nah. Most people I work for have been sound. That's all right. Me, I've had some fucking nightmare bosses. Like, like the kind of shit you read about in fucking, you know, papers. Like, like where, like, journalists infiltrate and stuff. Like, yeah, I've had some absolute nightmares, mate. Like who? Uh, you know, when I worked over at Orange, there was this fucking mental manager that we had uh, called Bernadette. Like, and... Uh, she she just and again it's it's stuff that you just couldn't get away with now. We had a Russian guy we worked with called Demantos, right? She would only call him Demented. <laughs> this is, Dementos. Yeah, so he was called Demantos was his name, and uh, yeah, every time she called him up to the fucking thing, like she would Demented, come come here, Demented. Like just in front of the group, straight and psychological like, warfare on this bitch. Yeah, just straight wrecking him. Like, like he, he was a nice guy as well. You know, he was a nice, he was a massive. The thing is, he was a massive. He was a big Russian bear of a man, like a classic Russian. But he was like a gentle soul, you know, like Colossus out of X Men or something. And um, yeah, she used to just fuck. She bullied him and like just wrecked him all the time. Like, and she used to just do all sorts of mad shit. Like, like just crazy, just make you just do crazy things, you know? And, like, everybody knew it was going on, but obviously the fucking, you know, she was, um, I think she knew where some of the bodies were buried for her bosses, you know? All right. Yeah. And then, obviously, what happened was one day, you know, everybody, w like, snapped. Like, we all wigged the fuck out. <laughs> we all put in, like, a group complaint. Fuck off, I was going to say, you know, how did he wig out? But one oh, day we I mean, all just snapped. <laughs> Yeah, we, no, but like the whole group just snapped. Like, like sacrificed. It was, it, it was yeah, like it was yeah, it was like a, a very quickly spread rebellion. Like, I think one day she was just laying in to fucking demand us again, and everyone was like, well, "Are you gonna fucking stop your drawing or what?" Like, like we're all fucked <laughs> off. And then everyone was like, "Yeah, yeah, and then, fuck like, you, right, bitch. well, you're, you're doing, you're, you're, and then, no one was having it. She just had lost all power in that moment, you know. And then everyone just got up and said, we're not working again, put in complaints. HR got brought in. We had to have an interim manager, you know. Yeah. So there you go. Um, but yeah, but I, I don't know what happened to Demantos. He was a good old boy. Never talked to him after the job. 
No, I mean, like when I when I quit that job, I I did the fucking I did a massive piece out. I did. I, <laughs> I, 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 piece out. Yeah, I caused the scene. Django style, like blowing up the mansion yeah. on the way out. Yeah, it was the like into the Django, you! <laughs> it was like that. Bow, 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 bow. I just had enough, like. <laughs> Wait, I had enough. What happened? you got to say no. You can't say I had enough. No, nah, because it was like, oh, we got rid of one fucking crazy fucking piece of shit manager. The guy who came in to replace her was great and everything. But, like, he was getting married. And then, so he started having a breakdown. <laughs> right. So, you know, we went from opposite ends of the spectrum. We went from some fucking absolute, you know, iron bitch who just bullied everyone and was fucking, you know, r- r- racist, bigot, you know, you name it. Yeah. Then we had this guy who was too fucking nice and then started losing it because he couldn't juggle getting married with a job. <laughs> so, I, I, so I ended up helping him out because he was, he was the solution, right? But I was doing loads of fucking work. And then anyway, when his nerves got too fucking frazzled and he had to quit, because he, he was just on sick leave, just, you know, just a burnout. I was like, right, well, so which I, I'll inherit this team now. Like, it's my, right? And they put me on, like, what they call secondment, which is basically where you get no extra money. You still have to do your regular day job, but you also have all the responsibilities of a manager. And have to, so it's just the way a, comp, a corporation will just fuck you, you know? Yeah. Right. So I was a seconded manager. This was my first ever management gig. And uh, when the job came up, they just passed over immediately. So I did, I did, I did with Django when I left. Like, <laughs> massive letter, complaining, exposing all the secrets, you know. So, so yeah. But I didn't punch anyone. Is the key? Didn't do it in style like it's to do what? I know. Exactly, yeah, looking back, like um, probably should have. Should have probably. Yeah. So, uh, let, let's, let, I'm, I'm trying to balance the show because there's a lot of funny ones and there's a lot of sad ones and, you know, it's important to get it all the right way around, but let's, let's just uh, get into this. All right. That, Cause I couldn't believe this. This actually is legit. This isn't an April fool's. This, is, this legitimately happened. So, you know, cosmopolitan magazine, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that one it's, you know, 10 fucking blowjob tips and, you know, how to get a better skin. And, you know, it's a woman's lifestyle magazine. It doesn't shy away from sex and the modern woman and, and you know, uh, all the things she'll need to, to lead a full life. And they do politics as well, which is a fucking nightmare, obviously, because these, you know, it's a lifestyle magazine talking about politics, so it's always some like article that's just going to pander to the readership. Well, they actually tweeted out uh, this ridiculous thing, and it looked like any other. Art- it looked like anything else by Cosmopolitan, right? They tweeted out saying, "How did this woman lose forty-four pounds without any exercise? Like any, with like you know asterisks is either side of it, right?" So you think, well, this must be a mad fucking diet. Well, n- no, the story, when you clicked on it, was that the woman had a form of cancer. And and that's why she lost 44 pounds. So, a, a, bit, a bit fucking strange, really, to kind of frame cancer as a diet plan um here's the thing she was she had bounced back she'd had cancer right she'd got better she said that having cancer had helped her uh appreciate her body and her need to be healthy again and she did have a book talking about that and uh, it was called you know the bod or something right but it was the disease that caused her to lose the weight. So, you know, it's not like a fucking juice cleanse, is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like the fucking juice cleanse. It's not like, right, have a mean green. And and yeah, people in the chat are going, see, Richard, all you have to do is get cancer. Uh, look, 
I think anyone who's seen the people who tweet at me on a daily basis, I'm I'm there. It's it's firing up inside. I just got to hope I get the kind of I you know the kind of cancer that eats other cancers, and I'll be all right. I'll be able to keep going. But I mean, just what a ridiculous fucking assertion, you know? This is how this woman lost forty four pounds without any exercise. Terminal cancer. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I'm sick. Yeah, I'll do a. Let me try. Yeah, that sound. Out. Yeah, sound. I'm in. I'm in. You know, people are just fucking railing lines of asbestos. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, at least if they said that, you could try it. Yeah. You know. Even if I, even if right, even if some mental cancer, you know what? I'll take cancer on the chin to lose some weight. You can't just like, inject yourself with cancer, can you? It's not even doable. Yeah, I don't know, actually. You're going to be mental not. at least make it possible. Ah, it probably could give yourself cancer if you, like, figured out a way to just microwave with a door open. <laughs> probably that'll do it. The old Randy Marsh style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Swear a lot. Um, then, okay, while we're on the subject of cancer, I think we can uh, bring this story up. This is... Uh, Again, just, you know, what a fucking world. You know, there's always someone who just is willing to get offended on behalf of everyone for no fucking reason. All right. So this is on WBRC.com, which is a subsidiary kind of a Fox News, right? This is a story in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, that um, the police were called because a man refused to take off a breast cancer awareness t-shirt. Now, if you click on the picture, you can see him there in the pink, right? And you can see he's there with his family, and it says breasts, breast matters, right? And it's got a picture of some, like, like a line outline of some boobs on a pink background. Who could possibly, who could possibly be offended by that who could possibly look at that and think that that's got to go that's got to that's got to we live in an age where women feminists are walking around with cunts on their head and (laughs) this is the thing this is the problem you know is this where we're at pussy hats fine a man wearing a breast cancer awareness T-shirt, not fucking fine. So, and, and the story is ridiculous as well. So, uh, he got the T-shirt when he participated in a five-mile walk to raise money to help a friend who had breast cancer and to get money for the treatment. And he said, one of my best friends died a few months ago from breast cancer. One of my sisters is a breast cancer survivor. So it means a lot to me. Right? But he got told he was at Nicky West's. And he got told he had to take it off uh, at this restaurant. Otherwise, that was that. And he was out there celebrating his dad's 99th birthday. So imagine what kind of a double fucking arsehole you have to be. Like, this is like a mega arsehole. You've got a guy. You've got a guy who's just wearing a can- breast cancer awareness T-shirt. He's there celebrating. He's at your establishment celebrating his father's 99th birthday. You, you know, you can't just repress that little fucking desire to make the day all about you and your fucking feelings. You can't do it, can you? You can't just look at a good man with his family, ha- trying to have a nice day, a memorable day, for what could be one of his father's last birthdays, right? He's within touching distance of that 100, right? But, you know, it's touch and go when you're fucking 99. And you couldn't let it happen. You couldn't let it happen because your feelings, your feelings matter more than anything else in the fucking world. So it's good. It's good that there's busy busy, busy bodies out there, you know. Um, that said, this story blew my fucking mind. Uh, you know, there's a shortage of like foster parents right now. Yeah. 
You, you know, like they're screaming out for good foster parents to look after, you know, their kids uh, that, that had been, you know, fallen into the state system that had been taken away from parents that didn't look after them adequately. And finding good foster parents is difficult, you know, because of the financial incentives. There's so many people who want to like trick the system, rig the system. They farm foster kids, right? You know, and they bring them through because every time you take on a kid, it's money. And what they, they literally spend as little as they can on the kid and keep as much for themselves. So it's, a, it's tough. It's a rocky road. But this story is just unbelievable. This is the story that children were taken away from foster parents. This is on the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. Um, th th that foster parents had two children that they were perfectly, everything was happy, everything was fine. Uh, th they had the kids taken away from them because they wouldn't say the Easter Bunny is real. So they wouldn't say that the Easter Bunny was real. And because of that, because of that stance, which, you know, again... The Easter Bunny isn't real. Yeah, it just ain't. <laughs> do, do, do kids believe in the Easter Bunny? I don't think really? Kids do. I didn't when I was a kid. I did. They were like three, they're three, they're three and four. Well, you know. So, two girls, three and four. And anyway, the 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 group that do the assessment uh, came along, and it, it, the family are devout Christians. And, you know, they don't celebrate Halloween as a result of that, right? Because, obviously, it's not particularly consistent to the hardcore, you know, Christian belief to go out and celebrate what is, you know, an offshoot of a pagan ceremony. So, you know, I can understand that. And the child, uh, you know, the CAS, the Ch Children's Aid Society, said, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Uh, and... You know, they said if the children did want to go trick or treating and the biological parents requested this, which kind of seems seems like foster care in America is kind of fucked up because I don't think the biological parents should really get an influence on how you raise the kids that they chose not to raise. Personally, maybe that's mad controversial. How it works in the UK is, though, if you adopt a kid, it's you raise the kid by your standards, your values. You have been deemed by the state to be more suitable than the biological parents. And that takes a fucking lot. You know, people who watch this show for a while, and my girlfriend used to work in child protection, and I used to hear some fucking stories, and I used to say, like, why don't they just take the kids away? And, well, you can't. You know, they've got to, you have to put them on these, like, programs, and you have to monitor them, and, you know. But once, once you lose the access to your kid because you're, a, you know, a poor parent, then you know, I think I think the foster parents should get to call the tune, right? But anyway, they then said that they don't endorse Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, and they they wouldn't lie to the children. So the CAS decided that that was a step too far; that that was a form of abuse because the children weren't going to have a normal upbringing. So. They took the they took these kids away, even though even though they weren't doing you know they were, they were no abuse, perfectly well looked after, all the relationships were happy. Kids got to go get rehoused now because you don't want to tell them that the Easter Bunny's real. So, pretty pretty excessive, I would say. Probably is the word I would use for that. You're not telling your kids the right kind of fairy tales. Yeah, you know, like, what, what, are there any other lies? You know, could always tell them, you know, I don't want to tell them about the wage gap. Do I have to you tell them about that? You trying to tell these kids Harry Potter isn't real? Yeah. Get them out. out. Yeah, out of control. Stick them, stick them somewhere else. Um, here's something, you know, uh, internet trends. I fucking hate internet trends. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, you know, fucking planking and, you know, whatever it is, right? 
Well, there's one trend. That, I saw this. I won't lie. It was in my Facebook feed. But it does. These are the things that make me fucking hate the planet. Because I don't understand how this can be a trend. Like, why why this would take off, I don't understand. I, you know, I, I didn't understand planking. You know, whatever, would, whatever has gone on between now and then. You know, I don't get it. I don't want to get it. But there's a thing called nutscaping. Have you, have you heard of that? No. Right. So nutscaping is a trend where you take photographs of scenic vistas <laughs> and views. Yeah, I get it now. Yeah, and you dangle your balls just in shot so oh, that it's barely funny. noticeable. That's funny. And it's called nutscaping. So you'll see some photos here. I, there are, it says not suitable for work, but you can't tell yeah. they're balls. So they're, they're fine. They're just hairy arms. Calm down. Yeah. So you can see people taking the photos here. It's a good, you see, and, and here you have it, nutscapes. The second one's particularly yeah, good. Got hair. Some, good HD yeah, there. Um, but you know, I just don't under like who who thought of this. Like, who was the <laughs> so you know who thought of this? Who thought I, I this? I, I've got the next internet trend. I've got it nailed. Nutscaping, guys. Nutscaping. Uh, what's that? You just hang your balls a little bit close to your camera when you take a picture. Ah, uh, that that'll never take off. So, but it does. It did. Uh <laughs> so fuck that. But also, Sam, in a very real way, fuck this. Um, have you uh, you seen that they're remaking it? Yeah. Right now, you know what? I've said a lot on the show. Um, you know, I, I've, I've said a, a lot on the show that uh, I'm not prejudiced against anyone, right? Yeah. You know, I, I'm definitely not. But if there was one group uh, that I would definitely say probably deserves a little bit of fucking prejudice, it is clowns. Never been a fan of clowns, you man. No, nah, it's like, I'm not into that whole, like, it's kind of pathetic when everyone's like, oh, clowns are creepy. Like, just grow the fuck up. <laughs> like, just grow the fuck up. <laughs> if you've ever said, like, you know, clowns are scary, clowns are creepy, oh, I'm terrified of clowns. If you ever said that, you grow the fuck up. Get a grip of yourself. But, like, there is, you know, clowns do have some of that, if I, if I remember rightly, I think they are meant to represent corpses. Are they? Yeah, right. So Why if the I remember, red nose though, wouldn't all the blood be gone? Well, hear me out. Right? So if I remember, if I remember rightly, okay. And I don't know if I made this up, or if I heard this somewhere in a documentary or whatever. But like, okay, so there was this thing called the Dan's Macabre, right? Right, and uh, you know, like, there's lots of. Uh, you know, kind of times, you know, th throughout all different cultures where the dead are meant to come back to life. And there's one where the dead come back to life and they're, they're for one day only, they torment the living. Right. They get their revenge over the living and they play practical jokes on us all and stuff. And this is where the idea of a clown comes from, apparently. This is why, again, this all might be made up in my brain. So I'm not going to stand by this one. This might be absolute fiction that I've invented. But the, the 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 way that clowns got going in the circuses were they were a representation of that mischievous spirit that had come back to earth. That's why they're white, pale, like a corpse. That's why they've got you know bags under the eyes and a red nose because that's where the blood pools on a body. You get a pallid complexion around here, but the extremities where the blood can't flow out of. That's why they have that long, disheveled hair, because there was a commonly held belief that the hair kept growing after you died. It's why, it's why their clothes don't fit. It's why the clothes are too big, because they're meant to have emaciated corpse bodies, right? Fucking weird, isn't it? So, now I think this is true. 
But I might be wrong. I might have made it up. And if I've made it up, I've got to say it's the cleverest thing I ever made up. Yeah, not bad. Right? But anyway, that's meant to be what, where they come from. So you're meant to find them slightly weird and repellent. Because they're meant to represent the souls of returning spirits who are here for one purpose, and that's to torment you and play practical jokes on you and stuff. Uh, I don't know where the small car thing comes from. I don't know, you know, that. I can't explain no, what it is. Because they're just came. souls. They can just be compacted into small no, cars. No, obviously, <laughs> somewhere along the line, it just became, you know, light relief and a comedic <laughs> action. Funny little anyway, and shit. The whole, the whole thing of this is, right, so there's a new It trailer coming out. All right? And... Uh, uh, it looks garbage, by the way. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to play the trailer? Yeah, but it might wreck us and copyright then. So fuck them. That's not. All right. Not okay. Worth. Well. Um. But bottom line is, it looks garbage. I like, keep in mind the original it, the original film. Uh, unpopular opinion time. That's actually garbage as well. It's got like a couple of vaguely creepy scenes but the rest of it's shit how can i take it seriously like a group of adults all get together oh you remember that clown that used to torment us as a child yeah it's real and it's an incarnation of evil let's all get back together as like 30 and 40 year old adults and try and kill it and trap it. like far what the fuck i've got things to do boys <laughs> i've got things to do you um you deal with the clown ghost like now that we're all grown up and it's left us alone and i'll just be you know and uh, you know the Tim Curry's great in it, but the film is garbage. The pacing's terrible. The acting's terrible. The script is terrible. But anyway, th this trailer looks worse. And a, what happened was there was a magazine called Mel Magazine, and professional clowns said that the It trailer was causing people to be prejudiced to clowns. <laughs> and they compared it to like racism grow the fuck up clown racism uh, I'll read stuff. for a living uh, I'll show you the original you can see here's the original article if you want right so we don't just leech uh, off heat street and give, give them the attention but uh, you know I'll read you some of the interviews here it's going to be bad for clowns, says Guilford Adams, a 42-year-old L.A. resident who has performed as Gilly for 20 years. It's ruining our business, adds 33-year-old Nick Kane of L.A., clown name Mr. Nick. Roger Fohas, a 48-year-old clown whose characters include Ringmaster Roger and... <laughs> So he's a gay porn star, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ring Master Roger and Humpy Pumpy. Yeah, right, uh, let's, clone, let's, be, yeah. let's be real. Are you inviting Ring Master Roger and Humpy Pumpy to your kids' party? <laughs> Do you think maybe the it's not it that's killing your business? It's maybe the fact that you do sound like some sort of demented sex pest. Yeah. Maybe you should be calling yourself villainous nonce names. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe change the name to just, you know, Balloon Master. Roger. <laughs> yeah, Ringmaster Roger. <laughs> so Roger Fohas worries it will make kids so terrified of clowns that their parents will stop booking clowns for birthday parties. Anyone still even doing that? Who books clowns nowadays? And, and they said he's already experiencing the negative effects of the It remake. He noticed a considerable drop in traffic to his Yelp page in the days immediately following the trailer's belief. It's never been harder to be a clown, or say. And then they brought up, you know, John Wayne Gacy, the serial killer who raped and murdered, you know, loads of boys. And he used to perform as Pogo the clown, right? Um, which, yeah, that definitely didn't help, by the way. That definitely, that, you know, I'd agree that, that John Wayne Gacy didn't do a lot for clowns. Here's the thing, right? Let me just put this out there, right? Um, 
you're going to defend John Wayne Gacy <laughs> mentally the way you process it. On, right, on, hang on. on. Let me just... Now, John Wayne Gacy was bad, but... Yeah, right, go on. Then. So here's the thing. Um... Why don't clowns just readapt, like repurpose their job? Yeah. Like, why don't you, right, if you know that people are scared of clowns and people don't want to book you for kids' parties, why don't you just become, like, you know, chainsaw wheeled in, jump out of a cake, scare a thons? Yeah, those escape rooms now. Go work in those. Now, everyone does those escape room shit. Now, all the hipsters love that. We got to get out of a room in a certain amount of time. There you go. Go yeah. in there with a fucking chainsaw and no blade on. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the that's that's the that's the future, right? Like kids these days are who the fuck is entertained by a clown? Yeah, that's like, what I mean. No no kid I've ever They got phones now. Like, yeah, you got mate, they're just plugged into the I information. Can teach myself how to make that blue. Yeah, exactly. I can watch a YouTube video, I can have your job within 30 minutes. What the fuck are you talking about? You know, but uh, it also brought up as well, just to touch on that racism thing. Uh, clowns in London cried racism over a sign, uh, <laughs> which said "No clowns allowed." So, so you know, clowns are a protected group. Obviously, uh, there was this sign here, uh, and you can see. There's a no clowns allowed sign, and you can see police being called to deal with some angry clowns. This fucking planet, mate. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm out. I've had enough. Like, no. Right, just no, but just read the read the exchange. I asked your owner to take down this racist sign. Said Blamo. <laughs> <laughs> Buttons Blamo. <laughs> Professional clown. Oh, fuck me, clowns, mate. I'll tell you, so there you go. Um, Anti-clown anti -clown prejudice is it an all-time high. Uh, right. Of course, Let's they're get... breeding, by the way. Of course, they got a kid. Glad Blamo's well, breeding. Yeah, Blamo. Right, probably, you know, that's how clowns recruit, isn't it? You have a kid and you teach it the trade. Sounds... Mm. And, and, How about yeah. we just let that trade die, shall we? <laughs> let that go. Don't need that anymore. So this next story, uh, this guy went for a job interview uh, to, to become a, pol a police officer. And during the course of the interview, they asked him, you know, is there anything else you think we might need to know? And he confessed to a sexual assault that he'd never been charged with. Sorry. Yeah. So, again, I'll, I'll say that again. This guy wanted to become a police officer. He was applying to become a police officer. During the job application, it's going well. During the interview... He said, they said, well, like, is there anything else you wanted to clay? He said, yeah, I sexually assaulted a woman. I had sex with her and I filmed it. And needless to say, the interview was terminated. <laughs> and he was charged and is now on bail and didn't get the job. I, I, you know, I don't know if he was thinking, like, I'm going to get immunity now. Like, do you know what I mean? Oh, I've got the job, have I? Oh, sound. Well, just before you give me the badge and that, let me tell you, I've been out straight raping people and that. <laughs> Do you know I what I mean? Know what's wrong with his head? Like, why? Why? Is he... <laughs> Anything else to declare? Well, I'm a semi professional rapist. <laughs> and, quite got responses, uh... yeah. Yeah, and murdered murdered a bunch of fucking tramps. Uh, you know, killed killed some fucking homeless people. I <laughs> did killed one on my way over to this job actually, but I'm in now, aren't I? So, I unbelievable, 
Um, so pro- probably the maddest thing I've heard of for a while. Uh, so yeah, the guy uh, is currently, like, say, on bail. He's being held um, with a twenty-five thousand dollar bond. So probably not going to be a police officer. So I guess we dodged a bullet with that one. This one, I, I like this. I did like this one, right? So this is in Australia. Um, and you know what Aussies are like, right? So <laughs> this whole story is brilliant, mate. I can barely even read it because it's like got Australian quotes in that I don't know what it is. But basically, right, this guy, this teenager from Queensland um, wanted to show these girls who were out there in Australia like, oh, you'll never get attacked by crocodiles. It's only idiot tourists that that happens to. So to prove it, he jumped into the water and got bit immediately by a crocodile. <laughs> got attacked immediately. And the thing is, like, just look at this. He said, Lee DePau said he'd had about 10 cups of goon. <laughs> what? what is goon? I don't even know. What the fuck is goon? I've got to Google it, mate. Oh, what is goon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, mate. I've had 10, 10 cups of goon. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened. It's like cheap wine, apparently. It's like so. cheap wine. So he's had he's had 10 cups of goon, right? Uh, and then he decided that he saw this beautiful backpacker named Sophie Patterson. So there was a group of travellers that were there, and they were like saying, oh, you know, crocodiles... They only kill backpackers because you're all idiots. So to prove his point, he jumps into the water and a crocodile grabbed him immediately and, <laughs> and, and, and bit him right on the arm, right? And he says, yeah, I managed to get a good punch in on its eye and then it let go and I swam back to the stairs. Uh, I didn't feel no pain at first. It was all adrenaline and goon. <laughs> But afterwards, it's when like I walk up the man. main street, he's just walking it off, mate. He's walking a crocodile bite off. I was just in pure agony. I couldn't stop screaming. Miss Patterson said she watched on in horror as a three-meter crocodile suddenly latched onto the daredevil's arm. I've never heard a guy scream like that, she told Nine News. There was a lot of blood, a lot of bone. Um, good news, though. Miss Miss Patterson agreed to go to the movies with him. Oh, nice. Afterwards. Uh, so it was all worth it. Yeah, um, it nice uh, again, mate. And a trap has been set up to catch the crocodile, even though Mr. DePau doesn't want it to happen. He said, I don't want that crocodile harmed. I want it to have a happy life. Nice guy. It's so a nice, nice guy. guy. Nice guy. He worked out all right. Turns out all you have to do if you want to impress beautiful women is jump into the water and get your arm bit off by a crocodile. And then just walk it off like a poor just savage walk, cunt. Walk it off. Can I go get me some more goon? Fucking Fuck you know. hell. Need some more goon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone got any fucking goon? <laughs> oh, mate, what a beast. Like, fuck it. That's Australia in a nutshell. That story is. Just is Australia Powered in a nutshell. by goon. Yeah. This story brought to you by Goon. Uh, okay, so we're, we're winding down. We're getting to the the breaking point. So I'll just throw out a few more stories. Uh, this one, you know, might trigger a few people, but fuck it. That's the show we do. I thought this was a bit strange myself, right? So there was a nightclub in Tunisia, right? And a DJ uh, was having a play in it, right? And he put a remix of the Muslim call to prayer in into his set. Right. Well, you know, what's the problem? <laughs> but turns out people didn't like it. Uh, so Tunisian authorities had to shut down the nightclub, like, completely because of what happened. And there was a bunch of people, uh, you know, threatening to kill the guy and all that because... 
it had offended their, them. It had offended their feelings. Uh, so the governor uh, even gave a statement about it, saying after we confirmed the facts, the fact being he'd played a techno remix of the call to prayer, um, after confirming the facts, we must close down this nightclub. We will not allow attacks against religious feelings and the sacred. So uh, this is the organizer of the Orbit Festival had to apologize. Uh, Dax J is English, and he's been playing the track recently on his European tour and did not realize that it might offend an audience in a Muslim country. So he offered his sincere apologies. Uh, you know, I, I got to say, if I wanted, if I felt like my fucking religion wasn't well represented and people were treating me as like otherworldly and, you know, what better way to normalize it than by showing it can be cool, right? Yeah. You know? So they, they fucking, they played this and uh, there was just a fucking uproar about it. Closed down the whole nightclub for allowing this blasphemy. Smothered the nightclub in peace, man. Yeah. Till it peaced out. So, yeah, English DJ getting fucking wrecked in Tunisia. But I thought that was a bit of a fucking over, thought that was a bit of an overreaction, you know. Um, what about this as well? So, hang on, let me just bring this up. I'm getting one of the ad block sites. So here you go. Uh, you know what? You remember Al Gore? Yeah. You remember him, right? Yeah, of course. He's, he's the guy who wanted us to be more, you know, pre presidential candidate. Like, you yeah, he wanted us to, um, you know, pay more attention to the climate. He had that documentary in 2006 called An Inconvenient Truth. And anyway, you know, I think he has a point, right? So I'm, this isn't the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, but it is a leap. And that is that, you know... Obviously, climate change will cause it, political issues. Something as important as the climate will have an influence in what we do, what decisions we make, primarily any decisions we make about resources and that kind of thing. But he actually came out, he, he spoke at an event uh, a week or two ago, and he said that Brexit was caused by global warming that is it was it's all global warming's fault that's why we have brexit um and this is just again like I, I you know i don't know why people keep trying to explain brexit away as if it's like the wildest thing that ever happened in british politics like there was a period where we weren't in the european union there was a period when many people in Britain didn't want to be in the European Union. Our politicians had to kind of negotiate all of the terms within which we would enter into the European Union. People remember, you know, nobody nobody went mental when we said we want to keep the pound. We don't want the euro. You know, nobody called anyone a racist when they said the pound is a sign of our sovereignty, our independent currency, whereas everyone else in the Eurozone was giving it up and going with the euro. Uh, a decision, you know, to keep the pound obviously looks to be the right one. Nobody, nobody went mental about that. But people just haven't been able to deal with Brexit at all. They just keep finding all these ridiculous explanations. Well, but it's global warming, did it? It's, um, it's the lies. You know, they, they, they attack the people for being racist and stupid and everything else. And now it's like, as we're still moving into this, like, make-believe land where it might not happen, they're just trying to come up with any reason to kind of justify it. Like, people can't understand that maybe it's just what the majority of people wanted or the majority of people who participated in the vote wanted. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. I certainly didn't. But once it's happened, like, why not? why not mobilized before the vote like nobody did it was just all like these brexiteers are idiots and that was that back to fucking tea and scones meanwhile the majority of the working class felt well you know fuck it I think this is a way we can actually make our voice heard for once this is an issue that actually speaks to us they might have been lied to by fucking demagogues 
you know, the jury's out. Uh, you know, I'm not particularly a fan of Boris Johnson. I do find him a buffoon. I'm starting to warm to Nigel Farage. But, it, you know, global warming, is this is this the best we can do? Is this the best we can do? I, uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Uh, right, last couple of stories. Uh, let's do this one. Man finds a unique way to fix the pothole problem in Manchester, right? This, this again, people will be reporting the channel probably. But he realized that if you said, I want, you know, there's the pothole in this area, the local council would say, well, we can't fill it in. We haven't got the resources. We haven't got the time. We'll get around to it. And, it, and people weren't fixing the potholes. So one guy, an anonymous guy, started going around and spray painting penises over where the potholes were. And the penises was such a problem, people would immediately fill the potholes in. <laughs> so a Manchester man known as Wanksy, <laughs> obviously a play on words, uh, of Banksy uh, is using his penis graffiti to force the councils to fill in potholes. And you can see these pictures here. It's just knob after knob after knob. And people, <laughs> and, and, and massive this is red knob. Yeah, massive red knob to get it done with, with the signature wax yeah, underneath. Um, and it, this gets the problem fixed. People come and get the potholes done. Now, local councillors, uh, 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 you know, don't like it, apparently. They're saying the actions of this individual are not only stupid, but incredibly insulting to local residents. Has this person, for just one second, considered how families with young children m must feel when they are confronted with these obscene symbols as they walk to school? Not only is this vandalism, but it's also counterproductive. Every penny that we have to spend cleaning off this graffiti is a penny less than we have to spend on actually repairing the potholes, which we weren't doing. Yeah, exactly. It's the opposite of counterproductive. You were doing yeah. nothing, and now you're doing something. That's the opposite exactly. of counterproductive. It's productive. We urge Wanksy to stop defacing the roads immediately and ask anyone who sees this sort of criminal damage being carried out to report it to the police and the council. You know, look, fair enough. Uh, maybe, like, you can see with the red one, for example, uh, they haven't done a great job of hiding the knob. Like, uh, you know, they filled still... in the middle, innit? They filled in the shaft. Uh, you know, it's but they... um. Vein, really, haven't you? Yeah, they. Yeah, that's a problem. But um, you know, you can you can while you're there filling in the pothole, maybe you know, get the jet maybe wash do. Out. Yeah, maybe have a jet wash. Yeah, you know, just putting that out there. But I'll tell you, so most parents, I imagine, especially you know people who cycle, pretty sure they're like, you know what, if I have to see a bit of knob graffiti on the way to work to have a nice smooth road that doesn't fucking wreck my car or wreck my bike. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably take that one on the chin. Like. Worth. Worth. And it, it depended on the age of the kid. I mean, you know, I don't know what your fucking school toilets graffiti was like, but there was plenty of fucking cock and balls being drawn in my school toilets. <laughs> yeah. I think nothing you know. to be hidden, like. <laughs> your school probably had fucking glory holes in it. Yeah. Mate, good. People just racking lines. <laughs> Reasonable. Not even a joke, mate. We had a guy who went in the toilet, just took six Valium, but slept in there till like 5 pm, clean his phone. Him. <laughs> that happened, but <laughs> people at street didn't give a fuck in my school. But... Um, and then I, I think we can just drop the world's uh, one of the world's saddest man. You've seen, you know, you've seen these people. Uh, you you know they exist, and you you knew this was coming. Uh, we've shown you feminists that like marry themselves, uh, but this is this is probably sad. Um, just have a look at uh, at this story. This is a, an engineer in China who failed at the dating game, 
and now he's marrying a robot because he got he can't get a human wife. Yeah. Did we already? I'm sure we already covered this. Or did I must no, have seen no, it? No, it was a different one. It was a different. Oh, it was one. a different guy. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. So this is uh, a guy who's only 31. Uh, but he's an artificial intelligence expert. He designs and creates robots in Hangzhou. Uh, and he's made a female robot, um, which he's then married. And you can see him here. So he's decided, like, fuck it. I'm just going to double down on this. Like, I'm just going to double down on the robot, which is called Wife. <laughs> Hello, Wife. And you can see photos here he's, uh, of the ceremony. If you scroll down. <laughs> Mentally ill. He's looking pretty happy with himself. <laughs> his mother and his friends were witness to the glorious event. And uh, Never more disappointed. Well, probably not. But um, he says that, um, you know, so far she can identify Chinese characters and images and even say a few simple words. Wow. So it's not even as good as a computer then. Even my computer can do that. He hasn't even got a laptop no, in that shit. No, but he's just got a sex doll. Yeah, right. But he says that Zeng is also planning to upgrade his robot wife uh, to enable her to walk. So she's gonna. He won't have to carry her everywhere. Good, good. And um, she's gonna. He's gonna program her to do household chores. Sound. Is, is it any wonder that he this guy failed at like the dating game? You know what I mean? Oh, I can admit, robot isn't even good, but it's literally not even a laptop. It can't even read shit. My phone can read shit. It's absolutely. You hold an iPhone, it reads stuff. You can't even do yeah. that. Can your phone suck you off? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. He's all in on the just a fucking rubber hole, basically. <laughs> he could have married the flashlight with a fucking iPhone tape to it. Would have been the exact same thing. Would have been Imagine easier to carry. How long is it before someone marries their fucking flashlight, by the way? <laughs> how long is that? Like, that's coming. Like, yeah, you're right. Yaz just married a fucking flashlight, basically. <laughs> he just starts a walking, uh, not even a walking flashlight. Yeah, just you a can't even walk. I, I think. Uh, just a, a flashlight that could read. That's a real flashlight with a phone tape on it, but so get your dick in that, mate. Uh, unreal, isn't it? Ah, uh, so there you go. I think we've done it. We've done a show. So we're gonna do a, show a rich show yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah. So. Are we what? fucking hell? Yeah. Why not? I am. Oh, why? Or do you want to just stream some games instead? Uh, I wasn't aware we can do that, but... Yeah? Yeah. It's up to you. We can do that, yeah. Sure? Yeah. All right, just checking, mate, because I never know what I'm going to get these days, do I? <laughs> well, now uh, that you specified the show, I'm sure I can do it. All right, cool. Right, then. So, uh, well, just turn it off, run, run, run a break, run some ads, run some music, whatever we used to do in the good old days when we used to stream. And we'll uh, we'll queue up a Richard Lewis show for after this. But that was the end of I Hate It Here. If you are watching it on a VOD on our YouTube channel, uh, that was the news. We really wish it wasn't. We'll see you next time.